and welcome to Hillbilly DVD Reviews. In case you didn't know, this has been a big week for fucking Steven Seagal. Action extraordinaire, you know, superstar, fucking, you know, martial arts, fucking artist, sensei, you know. And now he's dipping his fingers in the law enforcement head to show lawman. But he's going a step further now. Down in Arizona, the sheriff has Steven Seagal training not policemen, but posse members to fucking, you know, guard against school shootings and shit. And because they can't put a cop at every school and shit, they're putting these posse members or whatever the fuck they... First of all, they're called a posse. They're called an armed fucking citizen's posse, whatever the fuck they are. Well, Steven Seagal's training them. If you go online, you can see footage of Steven Seagal. He's creeping around hallways and simulated school shootings and shit. What... <laughs> What kind of training he could fucking tell them? You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know what his qualifications are, but hey, it's fucking Steven Seagal. So in order to celebrate that, we're going to review a Steven Seagal classic. Also, because Philip requested that I do a wee review of this film, I'm going to do it for him as well. So today we're going to be reviewing the fucking ultimate Steven Seagal classic. I'm the Siege, starring me, Steven Seagal. After the success of Die Hard in 1988, action fans will remember there was a slew of these fucking fake Die Hards, man. There was fucking Die Hard in a fucking shopping mall. There was fucking Die Hard, you know, in an airplane. There was Die Hard fucking, like, whatever they can make a Die Hard out of, you know, to basically set up a bunch of terrorist motherfuckers run into it somewhere, take it over, and then one man has to fight back to fucking regain control. But they were doing it. Well, Steven Seagal got the fucking call in Under Siege, where it was basically Die Hard in a fucking naval boat. The movie starts out when George Bush, no, nah, not fucking little baby bleep 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 Bush, but the original George Bush, fucking, he, like, was, you know, putting all these warships down, retiring them and shit, all these old warships. So he said this boat, the fucking U.S., wherever the fuck the cigar was on, was going to go down. So they're going to have one big blast off to fucking have a party for the ship's captain because he's retiring along with the boat and shit because I guess the man has to go down with the boat. Where the fuck? I don't know these naval terms and fucking, you know, executions and whatnot. But anyway, basically, that's the premise of the big party getting planned, man. They're going to have fucking Erica Laniac playing Playboy Playmate, which is actually very cool because she was a fucking Playboy Playmate, all naked in Playboy in the early 90s, showing her titties. Well, she's going to come in. She's going to jump out of cake. There's going to be a fucking rock band, fucking rocking ass. Like, not even a rock band. Fucking an R&B blues band. Fucking led by none other than fucking big time rocker Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> And one of the most ridiculous pieces of costume and shit, right? And Tommy Lee Jones comes on the fucking boat, got a leather jacket and bandana and fucking sunglasses, and he's like, I tell you what, man. Fucking, we all know Tommy Lee Jones is a big, you know, Academy Award winning actor and shit now. Back in the day before he was real fucking famous, you know, he just had to do bullshit roles just like anybody else. And here he is in full display, man. Just goes to show that just because you fucking win Academy Awards in a good movie doesn't mean that you're not, you know, uncapable with some bad performance. This motherfucker acting ten times more villainous, acting ten times more fucking jackless than he even did in fucking, you know, the Batman movie where he played Two-Face and shit. In the Batman movie with Two-Face, he was all like, ah! And fucking this movie, Tommy Lee Jones is like, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. First of all, who the fuck believes Tommy Lee Jones? You, Tommy Lee Jones looked old in the fucking 1960s, let alone early 1990s. Who was gonna believe him as the leader of this rock band? But they did. You got Gary Busey, he's kind of like the right hand man to the captain on the ship, acting so fucking horse two jackasses ever, man. Like, I really think, like, they could have, like, read into the script that he was half donkey, half human. Because the whole fucking time we got them fucking big Gary Busey chompers on full display. <laughs> This movie starts out serious, naval, whatever. You got all these jokers jumping around. But as always, there's one man on the ship who's serious, ain't running around playing grab bath. Takes the fucking tradition seriously. He's a real naval officer. And who is that? None other than Casey Ryback. The fucking ship's cook, played by Steven Seagal. That's right, Steven Seagal is playing a cook. And not only is he going to play a cook, but he's going to remind you that he's playing a cook. Because every time everybody asks him who he is or what he's doing, he's going to say, I'm just the cook. I'm just a cook, Johnny. Hey, Johnny, remember me? I'm just a cook. That's all Steven Scott says in this movie. He's pretty silent. Just says he's a cook. So what happens? Big party. Whatever. You know, rock band and shit. All of a sudden, next, you know, fuck Tommy Lee Jones jumped off the stage with a gun and starts killing all the naval officers. The fucking terrorists who were like the rock band roadies and shit. Or <laughs> I don't know where they just pop out of nowhere. Start holding all the fucking sailors at gunpoint. Put the sailors down in the brig and shit. Not even in the brig. Fucking in the holding pins like where the water fills up and shit. Seals the doors. Next thing you know, it's the guy who's the only one who's free. They come across the Playboy Playman. They drugged her, man. That was another thing. I have a hard time believing these motherfuckers didn't like gang rape her about 30 or 40 times while she was passed out. But, you, you know, whatever. This is a studio movie. They ain't going to go there. So she wakes up. She pops up out of the cake. 
Fucking best tit shot I think I've ever seen in every movie. Damn, man. Fucking big, real, full, just amazing, man. Like, there ain't nothing like some fucking 1992 titties, I swear. So anyway, you get the banter between her and Seagal. You know, Seagal wants to just leave her in a closet somewhere. He locks her literally in a fucking boot locker or some shit. She gets out. She's being all annoying. But of course, as the movie goes on, she becomes a worthwhile sidekick and shit to fucking Seagal. Fucking helping him get out of situations, help plant bombs and shit. That's another weird thing about this movie is... As an action movie, is it good? Sure. As a Seagal movie, because this is known as the classic that launched him and made him a big star and shit. I don't know, man. Like, when I watch a Steven Seagal movie, I want to see as much bizarre shit and behavior on display as possible. I want to see him whispering, giving monologues to nobody to fucking make no sense. And he fucking barely talks in this movie. Like, you would have thought this was, like, his first movie instead of, like, his, like, sixth or seventh, if you know what I mean. Like, to really keep him under wraps, Seagal is barely in this fucking movie, man. You're going to have to put up with fucking Gary Busey, Horse 2 Jackass comments. You're going to fucking have to put up with Tommy Lee Jones fucking running around the shit going, ah, ah. I mean, just so much jackass behavior on display and shit. Tommy Lee Jones in the war room eating a fucking ham and shit with his bare hands greasy and shit dripping all over the control panels. Whatever the fuck. And what's weird is like they know some guy was on the loose pretty early on so they're you know they're, they send like two guys out of like the 20 terrorists and shit they got you know, to go fucking find Seagal. And, like, what's weird is Seagal just walks around pretty much the whole ship the whole time. And, like, they, like, not only do they not find him, but he just never runs into anybody. He gets into maybe two or three little scuffles there until we eventually we find out. Big plot. What's with this takeover? Why did Gary Busey go to the evil side? Why did Tommy Lee Jones play a fucking fake rock star? Well, it's because Tommy Lee Jones was a black ops, secret, 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 whatever, motherfucker. The army turned against him or whatever, so he hijacked this fucking naval ship. It's got Tomahawk missiles on it, man, like capable of just blowing up everything in the world. He's gonna sell the Tomahawk missiles for big money. It's kind of like the fucking plot of Expendables too, believe it or not. In order to show that he's got the goods to fucking whatever to sell to the world terrorist fucking market, Tommy Lee Jones shoots some fucking missiles off towards Honolulu, fucking, you know, they're trying to shoot him down with airplanes. The guy was trying to get the codes to blow up the missile so they don't kill anybody. So I don't even want to spoil that because that's the big conclusion. But kind of weird that a fucking Seagal movie ends with him punching shit into a keyboard and shit instead of just breaking motherfuckers neck. But like I said, not enough fucking Seagal on display, man. There's way too much time with Lee Jones, way too whatever. So as a Seagal fan, we got to respect it. It's a classic. It made him a bigger star. He can make more movies. Kind of this movie bought him the star power so he could go fuck his own career up with some environmental bullshit that nobody cared about. So Under Siege being kind of fucking generic early 90s, the fact that this plot has been done so many goddamn times, the fact that Seagal, you know, is not on fucking full display here with all his bizarreness that we know and love as true Seagal fans, I'm gonna have to give it kind of a low rating. Under Siege, even though it's considered a classic, I'm sorry, I can only give it 7 out of 10. Just a little bit too generic and there's better Seagal shit in the catalog. Alright, picture and sound is being an early fucking whatever Warren Brothers fucking blur rate. They don't give a shit. They just whatever. They kind of dumped it out. The movie does not look bad. Kind of looks like a really nice cleaned up DVD. But, you know, there's a few scenes that are kind of good. But, you know, it just has an old ass early 90s look where everything just looks a little flat. The lenses they use and shit. So, the sound. They pulled out Warner Brothers shit where the movie just starts playing. It's got the shitty sound. You got to go in and find a good fucking Dolby True HD. The sound is good, but it doesn't really match, I think, like current action movie standards for soundtracks and shit and being blown up and whatever. It sounds good, don't get me wrong, but this movie, believe it or not, <laughs> fucking was nominated for some Academy Awards and got some Academy Awards for a sound effect editing and actually won for best sound. This being, you know, granted it's 20 years ago, but this won an Academy Award for sound and then a the soundtrack just being kind of average for an old action movie, you know. Picture and sound is really middle of the road. I can only give fucking under siege. Six and a half and a ten. I don't picture and sound. Okay, fucking Seagology. There's lots of, we could have probably pulled out lots of interviews with Seagal and shit for special features. So where did they do? Nothing. <laughs> fucking Warner Brothers, if it ain't Harry Potter, if it ain't fucking Christopher Nolan's fucking bullshit Batman, they don't give a fuck. They said, under siege, Steven Seagal, fuck you. Into the wind, motherfucker. Where did they put theatrical trailer? That's it. Alright, whatever, motherfucker. Theatrical trailer, special features means you only get one out of ten. Steven Seagal, if you're watching this, and I actually I think you probably are, fucking stop turning out Expendable Street. Get in there, be the fuck. I know you think you already did the little villain turn, whatever, machete, but no, nah, man, this is Expendable Street. You're, everybody's gonna see this bullshit. Any friends or family Steven Seagal out there watching this, man, 
get to the man, get in his ear a little bit, tell him what his fans want. We don't want him training these arm posse fuckers and he busted up a cock ring with some cops. <laughs> like, no shit, he busted up a cock ring. Uh, not a cock ring, he busted up a cock fighting ring. They went in with a tank, fucking splattered all the fucking chickens. They went there to try to save 100 chickens, fucking splattered everywhere. Go in there and then I'm not making the show. Kill all his chickens in the effort to, you know, whatever. Steven Seagal gave a big speech with the cops that he just loved animals and he didn't want to see them fucking fighting to death and shit. And then they just rolled in there with a fucking, you know, TV cameras and shit. Killed every motherfucking animal in there. Steven Seagal, you had enough press. Do Expendables straight. Listen to me. I know what I'm fucking talking about, right? 